Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode. So in last episode we took on the LA Kings in the first round of the playoffs and we managed to outs them in six games and now we're up against Sweden for the second straight season, this time in the second round and their roster is pretty much the same as last year and they're still pretty young but they do have a lot more experience than it looks which means that they might be a scary team and they could technically upset us still. So I'm not counting my chickens out with them out on this series because they could be a team that upsets us easily. Because last year they almost upset us in the third round because technically they could have swept us, I think it was. Maybe not swept us. I think they could have won at least four of the first five games or something, but we managed to win the last few. So yeah, anyways, let's see what happens here in the second round of the playoffs. Hopefully we can move on to that conference finals again. Or else we might be packing our bags early again this year. So game number one on home ice. Because we got home ice the entire playoffs. Unless we face New Jersey I think it was. Or Nashville. Which I don't think Nashville still playing. First period. And it is one nothing Sweden. Not good. Frederick Modine opening the scoring. I think he's their only new acquisition. Uh, he, had, or they, he scored one goal on their only four shots that they had in that period. We got 10 shots in that period, so we need to start playing a bit better defensively, or Patrick Wall needs to play better. Second period, and still 1-0. Okay, that's better. Shots are 17-14 to 14 in favor of us, but it is still a 1-0 game for Sweden. Can we have somebody tied up here in the third, please? There you go, Ozelunch. Leave it to the Latvian legend. Well, actually, the Latvian legend is uh, Plakanov from my Sen series, but Knutsen giving Sweden back that lead, that's not good. Come on, boys. Final five minutes of this first or third period, not <laughs> first game, I should say, almost. And we are going to lose game one. Tight game. It's not a really good performance in a sense because their offense dried up a bit. And we've technically lost our home ice advantage as well. Ozelinch from Strubbuck in Sackick is your only goal. Hmm. Like, it was a good defensive game, but I just our offense didn't show up. Hmm. If we lose this game, I'm definitely going to make line changes just because that was our first loss in a row, but our first loss of this series. So hopefully we could bounce back to this because if we lose two games on home ice, I don't like our chances going back to Sweden. So game number two, come on, we need that top line to produce. First period, and it is 2 2. That's not good. In a way, it's good, but not good. Samuelson with two goals for Sweden, but then Watt and Hull score our goals. We're out to 15 to 8. So once again, Patrick Waugh seems to be dropping the ball. Two goals on eight shots. We might have to put in Carter next game. Second period, and it's still 2 2. Shots are 27 to 22, and it is a tie game. Come on, guys. I don't like these tight games. There you go, Peter Forsberg, leave it to the super suite of our own to give us the lead power play. We don't score. Final 10 minutes of this third period. And they are going to tie it up, Tate Cook, with the goal. Power play for us, though, and Hey Duke answers right back with job Milan. He's a good third period player, it seems like. Final little bit, and are you kidding me? They get a shorthand goal with 27 seconds left. Pedersen scores. God damn. What is this, guys? Uh, this is like last year how we let them score so much goals on so little shots. And like it was just a really tight series. But damn, come on, boys. Overtime underway. We need to win this game. Because if we lose now after letting in a shorthanded goal that late, I will be pissed off at this team. <laughs> Power play. Come on, you got to end it, boys. And we don't do so. We might be headed to double OT penalty kill. Nicely done. And really, are you kidding me? Pedersen again. 5-4 loss. Not a good game for Patrick Waugh again. And we're down 2 nothing. headed back to Sweden. Just because we let in a short-handed goal in the final minute. And then the same guy wins it in overtime. Yeah, Sweden is definitely a team that you can't overlook. Wow, okay, yeah, I'm going to make some line changes for sure. Maybe I'll put Ken Klee back in because we did just put Aaron Miller in for those two games. Maybe he's not playing the best defensively. 
But damn, Sweden is a dangerous team. Okay, let's go to edit lines. I think I'm going to take Patrick Wall out as well for a game. Just like what we did last year, because he kind of dropped the ball a bit. Let's put Gerbeshkov back up here. Or up there, and then let's put... Yeah, let's put but or Brett Hull on the third line. Even though Hull's been pretty solid. And wait, how bad is Culp been? He's an even zero. Yeah, I'm taking Ralph Culp out of the lineup, even though I don't really like taking out my prospect kind of guys. And we're going to put back in Colin Forbes. And then I'm also going to take Aaron Miller, I think, back of the lineup. Yeah, Aaron Miller is a minus two. We're going to put Kent Clee back in. And Patrick Waugh, he, yeah, he's kind of dropping the ball a bit. Yeah, we're going to put Ross Carter in. His last time we did that, that helped out Patrick Waugh because he's an old man. He needs his rest, kind of. So giving Ross Carter a game should be fine. Hopefully we can win in Sweden. Because if we lose any of these games, we're going to be down 3-1 to one or 3 nothing in the series. So here we go. Game number three. We made some line changes. Hopefully that helps us out here. First period, and it is scoreless. Okay, I'll take that. Shots are 11 in favor of us. Second period, and it's one nothing us. There you go, Sam Strudwick. The youngster opening the scoring. Shots are 24-14 in favor of us. Come on, boys. There you go, Brett Hull makes it 2 nothing. Yeah, it looks like Carter is playing really good right now. Actually, maybe not. He just lets in the goal from Viking Sad. It's a 2-1 to one game. Final 10 minutes of this third period. Come on, boys. There you go. Zubov, his first ever playoff goal, making it a 3-1 to one game. And final little bit. And we are going to take a huge game there. And it is a 2-1 to one series lead now for Sweden. So Strudwick from Forsberg and Flurry scoring in his hometown as well, I guess, because Strudwick is from Sweden, I think. Well, actually, no, he's from Denmark, I think, but he played in Sweden. Uh, Hull from Strudwick and Ozelinch and Zubov from Bulls and Hull. Three stars in that game. Brett Hull, the first star, Strudwick, the second star, and Vikingstad, the third. Okay, so that was a huge win for us. Hopefully, we can continue to do so in game number four. Because we did definitely play a lot better defensively in that game than we did in game number two. So here we go. Game number four. Patrick Waller should be back in the lineup now. Hopefully he could play good here. Like I would put Ross Carter in again, but still let's go with Patrick Waller this time. First period, and it's 2-1 for us after one. Again, Patrick Waller lets in one goal on six shots. Yeah, he's definitely getting close to retirement, I think. Sack again, Flurry get the other goals. Second period, and it's 5-2 to two us. There you go. They tied the game up, but then Zubov, Forsberg, and Hayduk score. And we have a 5-2 to two lead going into the third. But still, two goals on 12 shots. I'm kind of nervous about Patrick Waugh. So Hayduk made it 6-2. to two. Sorry about that. I had to get a drink of water. Because my throat is killing me. That's what happens when you record a lot of episodes consecutively. And we are going to win a crucial game 6-2 to two as we take both games in Sweden. And we have a tied series headed back home. So Flurry from Forsberg and Strudwick. Sackick from Jury and Ozelinch. Zubov from Bulls and Darmour. Forsberg from Sackick and Ozelinch. Hayduk from Sackick. And Hayduk from Gerbeshkov. Oh shit, sorry about that whistle kind of thing. I don't know why my, my uh, teeth did that. But, um, yeah, Sackick had a really good game. So, Captain coming through with some big three points. He gets first star, Forsberg the second star, and Hayduk the third. Okay, so, now that we are headed back to Colorado, hopefully we can use our home ice to our advantage here. We were down 2 nothing in the series, but we've played great in back-to-back -back games. Yeah, hopefully we can take this lead here. we got to play better on our home ice, too. Just we got to. <laughs> Game number five, let's see if we can win three games in a row here. First period, and it is scoreless 0-0. Zero, zero. Shots are 8-8 eight, eight apiece. Second period, and it's one nothing us. Good job, boys. Captain Joe Sackick. Seems like he's coming through in the last two games. That's his fourth point in two games. 
He's trying to get our team to rally, it seems like. Third period underway. Come on, boys. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Power play. Oh, my God. Was that shorthanded? Espen Knudsen tying the game up. Penalty kill. And Samuelson makes it 2-1. to one. Patrick Wall, man, you're dropping the ball. I know you're old, but still. Yeah, this might be a loss. Yeah, it's a loss. Damn. Our offense tried up that game, man. Patrick Waugh dropped the ball in the third. Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to Ross Carter for the next game. Which might be a bad thing to do. But I need to go back to Ross Carter, I think. Because Patrick Waugh has just kind of been, man, a series. He's not been that good. Like, he's letting a lot of goals on little shots. So, yeah, Ross Carter is going to come back in for this crucial game, hopefully forcing a game seven, because or else we are going to be eliminated. This is technically the same thing that happened last year, though, because we were down 3-2 in the series to them last year, but then we tied the series, and then we won it in game seven. Hopefully, we can do this again this year. Come on, uh, Carter, force a game seven, and then maybe you'll be the starter in game seven. So, here we go. Real-time simulation, since it's an elimination game. Let's see if we could tie the series up here. We need all our lines to score goals and captain makes it one nothing. That's not good. For Sweden penalty kill. Nicely done. Come on guys, we need to tie this game up here. We need our own super Swedes to come through. Uh this is not looking good. One nothing for them after one. One goal on 11 shots. So once again, we're not letting we're letting in goals on not that much shots. So we must be letting in really big opportunities or something. Second period, we need some big heroes to come through here in this period. Come on, Captain Joe Sackett, this might be your last NHL game. There you go, Gerbeshkov. Leave it to the youngster, tying it up at one. Huge goal from the seventh round pick. Come on, boys. Oh my God, Pedersen. I hate that Pedersen guy. Makes it 2-1 to one Sweden. That's not good. And we are down 2-1 to one going into the third period. Shots are in our favor. 20-17. to 17. Come on, boys. You could do this. We need somebody to be like a big, huge hero here. Like, I don't know who it is, but somebody come through here for us. Third period underway. We need a goal. Oh, not that type of goal. Vukovic. Or, yeah, Vukojevic, I don't even know how to pronounce it, and Vikings Sam makes it 4-1. to We're going to be eliminated in the second round of the playoffs by the Swedes, who are going to get redemption from last year. Yep, not a good game for Ross Carter either. We just did not play good enough defensively in this round, and we're going to lose in six. Wow, that really blows. We did not defend our title this year. Just led in way too much goals in the second round. Like, good luck to Sweden because they're a really good young team, but still. Gerbesh with his only playoff goal in that game. Oh, that really sucks. Well, I mean, now we can find out who wins the Stanley Cup technically during the lockout season because this is technically when it was. Too bad you can't actually have a lockout in this game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's sim to the draft. Actually, let's take a look at our player stats for the playoffs and then we'll sim to the draft. And take a look at all the awards and all that stuff. So player stats for the playoffs. So Flurry 12 points in 12 games. Might be in his last season. Maybe not, actually. Sakic 10 points in 12 games. Might be the end of his career. He might come back next year. You never know. Hey Duke, Drury, Forsberg, pretty good points. Seven points. He was a minus one this year, but still really good for him. His career playoffs, he's already got 18 points. He's a plus 17. But yeah, we had pretty good production throughout our lineup. It just, we did not get that wins that we needed. Even though our, well, it's probably because our left wing was a bit weaker than last year. That maybe is the case. Ross Carter played better than Patrick Waugh did. Yeah, see, Waugh probably, yeah, I think he's going to retire this year. He just struggled way too much in that playoffs, it seemed like. 22 goals against on 243 shots, or 265 shots. It's not bad, but still. Okay, so now let's sim to the NHL draft and also find out all those awards. Curious on who's going to win the cup this year. 
because Detroit, New Jersey, I would assume it's going to be either Detroit or New Jersey this year. I just have a feeling because those two teams are the best out of what's left. I mean, if Boston wins again, they would have won their second cup in three years. So they're also looking for another cup. And then Washington may be looking for retribution after last year's Stanley Cup Finals loss against us. And the New Jersey Devils are your Stanley Cup champions. So that's pretty accurate because they probably could have won if the lockout didn't exist. So New Jersey taking home another Stanley Cup. Means Marty Broder is going to have another Stanley Cup to hang behind his... Or another ring tied to his collection of MISC awards that he has on the Enterprise commercial. Um... So let's take a look at those awards. Okay, so New Jersey Devils, the Stanley Cup champions for the second time in four years. And they also won the President's Trophy this year. Good on them. The St. Louis Blues also went to the Cup final. New Jersey and St. Louis for the Stanley Cup. Interesting. Player awards, Forsberg taking home another. Art Ross is fourth in four years. He also takes home the Hartford fourth time in five years. So, yeah, Forsberg's just tearing it up in the NHL. Rohan Sutter? What? You gotta be joking me. This game literally fucked me over. Rohan Sutter takes home the James Norris trophy. Even though he had less points than Strudwick did. Why? Is it the plus minus? It's the greatest all-around ability in the position. I'll have to check that out afterwards, but that is weird. Why did Rohan Sutter get it? Strudwick technically should have his second. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably the defensive, like, plus minus. Blake Sloan, I think his name is. No, not Blake Sloan. Braden Sloan. Blake Sloan's an actual former cap player. But Braden Sloan takes home the Lady Bing. Adekalio takes home the Calder. Sakura takes home the Con Smythe in the playoffs. Interesting. So not Broder. Ryan Miller takes home the Vesna. And he takes home the Jennings. Solani takes home the Masterton. I think that's Taro Solani, not Timo. Or Timu. Uh, Walzer takes home another Selkie. And Forsberg takes home a Lindsay. And Eric Dezay takes home the Maurice Richard. AHL wise, any of our guys win awards down there? Nope. Okay, let's quickly look at those points again. Because I don't know why Rohan Sutter would take them. Yeah, the Norris. It's probably just the plus minus. But that really sucks that the game decided that she's over Strudwick already. Because Sam Strudwick had... <laughs> yeah, it was the plus minus category. He had nine more points, Strudwick, but he was like... Rowan Sutter was a plus 32. And that was the difference. Still, do you guys think Strudwick should have won a second Norris trophy? Because I should technically mark him down as a second one. Because I think he still outplayed Sutter, even though Sutter was really good offensively. And he played good defensively. I mean, Strudwick still played really good. Like, like he could be a Norris in our parts. Like, he only took six penalty, or, uh, t three penalty minute, or three penalties during the regular season. I like this guy's a team first type of player. Interesting. Okay, so now that we've seen the awards, now let's sim up to the draft and find out all those retirements. Hopefully we did not lose Sackick this year. I know we are probably going to lose Patrick Waugh because he's 39, but if he comes back for another year, I wouldn't be surprised either. So, the New York, which New York team is that? It's probably the Islanders, or it could be the Rangers. One of the New York teams has the first overall pick, followed by Calgary, Toronto, Anaheim and Buffalo. Interesting. So this would have been actually the Sidney Crosby draft, technically. If we were able to add players to this draft, I would have added Crosby for sure. So. Hmm. Okay. So let's see those retirements. Who is going to retire this year? Hopefully no huge names on our team. Okay, so there is a huge name, but it's not a guy that we signed in free agency. So, Peter Bondra, retiring with 446 points in 571 games, all with the Washington Capitals. Came off a pretty good year in his last season. Brett Hull retires with us with 378 points in 502 games. We just signed him only for that playoff cerebral regular season a bit, too. Pretty good career for him.
Valerie Kamensky, a former Colorado Avalanche player, retires with 300 points. Right on the dot. Played with the Flyers in the last season. Derek King retires with 258 points in 408 games. He dropped off considerably. He was playing in the AHL the final season. Thomas Steen retires with 221 points, playing with the New Jersey Devils in the AHL, actually. But he did actually play one game or two games the year before. Ray Shepard retires with 215 points in 399 games. He hadn't played at all this season. He was a free agent. Stefan Mateau retires with 205 points. He also played in the last season with the Finns. Mike Keane retires with 200 points. Playing with the Nashville Predators. Joe Juno retires with the Finns. Pretty good career for him. 200 points as well. Scott Thornton, the cousin of Joe Thornton, retiring with the St. Louis Blues. He was with us for one season. Doug Gilmore retires with the St. Louis Blues. That's cool. really cool that he actually went back to St. Louis. 171 points in his career. In this, at least. But yeah, that's cool that he played with St. Louis because um, St. Louis is where he began his career. Frederick Olsen retiring with the Flyers, 170 points. Pretty good defenseman. Was in the AHL the final year. Kent Manderville retiring with the Detroit Red Wings. Didn't get to play that much in the final season. Adam Creighton retiring with the Edmonton Oilers. Consistent fourth liner, it looks like, for the most part. Sylvain Turgeon retires with the Flyers. A lot of Flyers guys retiring. He was in the AHL the final year. Kevin Hatcher retiring with the Phoenix Coyotes. Another pretty good defenseman in real life. The brother of Darian Hatcher. Jason Woolley retiring with the team he started his career with, and that was Washington. It's cool. He only played like one season there in like 94. Yves Racine retiring with the Finns. All of those games coming with the Finns actually too, so that's pretty cool. Never got to play a single playoff game. Gary Volk retiring with the Flyers. Actually, their AHL affiliate. 23 goals, 1 assist. That's actually really funny. Damn. The guy did not pass the puck at all in the AHL. James Black retiring with the Boston Bruins. He played in the AHL in the final season. Robert Cron retiring as a free agent. Hadn't played in two years. Glenn Wesley retiring with the Ottawa Senators. Probably in their AHL, yep. Another guy playing in the AHL with the Sens. It's weird that they just lock up all these guys for AHLers. Uh, Gino Ogic retiring back in Vancouver. That's kind of cool as well because he played with Vancouver when they went to the Cup Finals in 94. It's always cool when one of these creative guys goes back to a team they played with. Uh, Sandy Moger retiring. I think he missed a couple of seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Sylvain Cote retiring with the Detroit Red Wings. Almost had a chance for a Stanley Cup. Benoit Hogue retires with the Phoenix Coyotes. I don't remember if we had him for a season or not. As depth or something. Unless I'm mixing him up with Herkish. Uh, Ricard Pearson retiring with the Florida Panthers. He played in the AHL the final season. Richard Schmelick retiring with the Buffalo Sabres. Where he started this mode in. There you go. Only one season in the playoffs. Doug Smolik retiring with the Sens. Probably AHL again. No. Yeah, actually NHL. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Ryan Carpenter, Josephson, John Gilmore, Sean Van Allen retiring as well as a free agent. Hadn't played in two seasons. Ryan Murphy, Rich Pilon retiring with the Rangers. He actually played the final season. Brent Fedick retiring as a free agent. Who else do we got here? Ewe Krupp, another former player of ours because he was just with us this last season. 
Unfortunately, he didn't get to play really any games, I don't think, this season with us. I actually did play a couple. Yeah. So there you go. Grenier, Reed Simpson, and Enforcer retiring as a free agent. Who else do we got here? Anybody else? Jamie Baker retiring as a free agent. Luke Richardson also a top six defenseman. Doesn't look like a huge number of retirements in comparison to the past years, but still a decent amount of players. Kevin Dean retiring. Former New Jersey Devil. Retired as a free agent. Matt Donovan, Paul Carey, Tim Erickson. Is that it? I just want to make sure that's it. Because there could be more guys always. Um, I think that is it. Oh, wait. No, that's Tommy Cross. Yeah, that is it for those guys. And then goalie-wise, Ed Belfour retires with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Interesting. It's kind of cool that he actually went back to Toronto in this, though, because he started with Dallas. Pretty good career for Ed Belfour. Kind of trailed off near the end of it, though. And then John Van Beesbrook retiring with the New York Islanders. Really good career for him for wins, at least. I think he did get to win one Stanley Cup with the Flyers in this build. Ron Tugnut retiring with the Vancouver Canucks. There you go. Dominic Hasek retires at 41 with the Calgary Flames. So he retired a bit early, but that happened in real life technically because he did retire on multiple occasions. So there you go. His actual... Wow. This last season he sucked eggs. Holy crap. 1 in 17, 856 save percentage and a 4.65. That's horrible. But then again, he was a 74 overall. Uh, Ron Hextall retiring with the Czech Republic. So there you go, Ron Hextall. Rick Tabaracci retiring with the New York Islanders. He was playing in their AHL team their final season. Dwayne Rolson retiring a bit early as well because technically next season in 05 06 is when he went to the Cup Finals with the Oilers. So that's interesting. Mike Richter retiring with the Boston Bruins, so he did not play all with the Rangers like he did in real life. Wade Flaherty retiring as a free agent. Never got to play a playoff game. And then we also got a couple more here. Chris Terreri retiring with the New Jersey Devils. So he actually went back to New Jersey in this because I think he played for Toronto in this build too. Uh, Bill Ranford retiring with the Flyers. He was in the AHL the final two seasons. And then that is it for retirements. So overall, it's not a huge retirement class. Like There definitely was some bigger guys like Brett Hull. But otherwise, not that bad. Now, final thing, let's take a look at the giraffe class going into next episode. So, there is a franchise go guy that is going first. So, one of the New York teams is going to get James LaRose. Looks pretty good. He's supposed to be like an Alexander Steen, though, which is weird. Okay, Cole Yakovo, Berkowitz, Kuz or Kuznetsov, Old Solar. Uh, let's see, we're drafting, since we got eliminated in the second round, we're probably like maybe 20-something. So we could get a top 6 forward, maybe a top 4 defenseman. So there's definitely some things we could go after. Let me just quickly also check this. I know this is going to take long as well. But I want to check if there's any guy with the last name Crosby in this draft, just because this was actually Sidney Crosby's draft. Like, it would be kind of funny if there was. Like, there probably is, but there probably is one with not that good potential, I would assume. Uh, let's see, Crosby, any Crosbys in this draft? Oh, there's a Crosby. Now oh, he's supposed to go really late, though. Malachi Crosby. Huh, okay. Let's just take a look at the gems and busts. Uh, any good gems? So Wars is still a gem. A guy's a gem that we saw last year. Remember, we I, I said this guy was a low, uh, doesn't look like a low franchise. This guy might be actually pretty good. 
He did just come off a really good season out of nowhere. He's probably a low elite, but I'm still going to pin this guy again. He might be pretty good. George Mertnick. Let's pin all these guys pretty much. Graham Lindsay and Jeremy or Jermaine Darby. Okay. So anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the offseason where we kind of look to strengthen our team a bit, maybe make some trades because we're kind of getting older and we need to be a good younger team now. So maybe we offload some veterans and all that type of thing. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.